Welcome back class, I'm Mr. Teacher with the SAT Math Video Guide. Today we'll try to finish as much of section 2 as we can. So starting from number 11, we have a sequence of four letters. The sequence above may be changed in either of two ways. Either two adjacent letters may be interchanged or the entire sequence may be reversed. What is the least number of such changes needed to put the letters into alphabetical order from left to right? So, first of all, what we need to note down is there are two ways we can change it. Either we can switch two letters, so maybe like Y and X, for example, to turn into X and Y, or we can re reverse the entire thing. So instead of Z, W, Y, X, it would be X, Y, W, Z. So we need to put this into alphabetical order. We already have made one change. Let's make another change. Let's switch Y and W, which will make it X and W, Y, Z. That's the second change. Let's make a another change. If we exchange X and W, we will get W, X, Y, and Z, which is in alphabetical order. So that required three steps to change from Z, W, Y, X into W, X, Y, Z in alphabetical order. So the least number of changes needed is three, which is choice B. Number 12 has to do with some 3D objects. So, how many cubical blocks, each with edges of length four centimeters, are needed to fill a rectangular box that has inside dimensions 20 centimeters by 24 centimeters by 32 centimeters. So how many of these little cubes will fit inside this big cube until it completely fills up? So we need, the easiest way to figure this out is to divide these numbers by 4 and then multiply each of them together. So 20 divided by 4 will be 5. 24 divided by 6 will, well, 24 divided by 4 will be 6. And 20, 32 divided by 4 will be 8. So the reason why we're dividing it by 4 is because we will be put, divide, we will be putting units, dividing it by units of 4. So that would require five of those little cubes. This will require six of the little cubes. This will require eight of the little cubes. And then it'll, it will fill up the entire thing. So to find the total number of cubes, we just need to multiply these numbers together. Five times six is 30 times eight is equal to 240 little cubes. And that is choice D. Number 13 has to do with square roots, fractions, and exponents. Well, a big mixture. So if 0 is less than n, if, which is less than 1, which of the following gives the correct ordering of the square root of n, n, and n squared? So if n is between 0 and 1, we can assume that it's a fraction. So let's pick a fraction like 1 fourth. So that's equal to n. Let's say the square root of n, so it will be the square root of 1 over 4, and square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2, so one half is equal to the square root of oops square root of n. n squared will be one squared over four squared. So one over sixteen, which is equal to n squared. So we need to find the correct order and all the answer choices go from least to greatest. So if we find the least here, it's one over sixteen. So first, n squared. n squared is less than n, which is 1 fourth, the next number in the series. And n 
is less than one half. A quarter is less than a half. So n squared is less than n, which is less than the square root of n. And that is choice E. Okay. Number 14 has a big graph. So in the figure above, what is the median of the slopes of lines OA, OB, OC, OD, and OE? So median, if you remember, is just the middle number. And we have five lines here. And clearly we can figure out which one is the middle line, which is OC. Because there's OA and then there's OB on the left side, so two lines, and then there's OD and OE on the right side, so another two lines. So OC is the middle line. So what is the slope of OC? Well, OC starts from the origin, goes up three, and goes right four. So the slope is three over four. This this question is put so, so close to the end of the series and for good measure because you sometimes you can confuse median with the mean or average, which is why it's a little tricky, but that will be choice C. Number 15, which doesn't have anything written on it. When it is noon Eastern Standard Time in New York City, it is 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time in San Francisco. A plane took off from New York City at noon Eastern Standard Time and arrived in San Francisco at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the same day. If a second plane left San Francisco at noon Pacific Standard Time and took exactly the same amount of time for the trip, what was the plane's arrival time in the Eastern Standard Time in New York City? Well, let's first note down the translation. When it is 12 p.m. or noon, well, then it's not... 12 p.m. It's 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. It is 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So this plane took off from New York at noon Eastern Standard Time or 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and arrived in San Francisco at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So that's 9 through 12, 3 through 4, 4. 4 plus 3, 7 hours. That's a 7 hour flight. All together. So, now on the same day, a second plane left San Francisco at noon Pacific Standard Time. And we need to figure out when it arrives at New York and Eastern Standard Time. So, if it leaves at noon Pacific Standard Time, we need to add three hours to it, so it'll be 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And to find the arrival, we need to add seven hours, since the trip will take the same amount of time as it took to get here. So that will be 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is choice A. And now number 16. So, in rectangle PQRS above, arcs QT and RT are quarter circles with centers at P and S respectively. If the radius of each quarter circle is 1, what is the area of the shaded region? So, oh dear, why does it look like that? Okay. So the radius of these quarter circles is 1, 1, 1, 1. And so the length of P line PS is 2. And since this is a rectangle, opposite lines are parallel and equal. So line QR will be equal to 2. So we, let's first find the area of the rectangle. 
The area of the rectangle is length times breadth, or 2 times 1, which is equal to 2. Now we need to find the area of the quarter circle. So let's first imagine that instead of quarter circles, this was a full circle with radius 1. So the area would be pi r squared. And radius is 1, 1 squared is 1, 1 times pi is pi. So the area of that circle will be pi. Now we have two quarter circles here, and as you know, two quarters make up one half, so the area of these two quarter circles is pi over two. So to find the area of the shaded region, we need to subtract the area of the quarter circles from the area of the rectangle itself. So it will be two minus pi over two, and that is choice B. I hope this helped you with your preparation. And I will see you in the next video.